This is going to be a video to explain the basics of the CNC machine and how to make a, a sign with it. Okay, we're going to go right over here to this VCarve Pro. We'll open that up and then we'll create a new file. Right here, where it says job size, is where you want to put in the, the dimensions of the project that you're making. So let's say I have a piece of wood that's 12 inches by eight inches. I would put that in here and then this is 12 by eight. Now the piece that I'm actually using is 24 inches wide and then up and down it is seven and a half. I'm putting 7.5 and it is three-fourths of an inch thick. So that's where this 0.75 is and that's all these are all very important. Now I'm going to create this. So now this is the size of my material. It's very important that when I make my sign, I don't go all the way to the corners here, all the way to the very edges, because I have to clamp this onto the machine when I'm um, cutting it with the CNC router. And I need room for the machine to be there. So don't make it to the very edges. Give yourself some room to clamp. Okay, so there's a number of things I can do. I gotta create what I call vectors. And this up here are the vectors. Now this is, I'm just gonna go through the basics. So I could put an outline around here if I wanted. I could do a circle or an ellipse, uh, a square, a rectangle, uh, you know, and, and a couple other shapes here. I can do text here. I'm just gonna make a fairly simple one. I'm gonna put a, a, a rectangle around here. So I'm just gonna draw it in where I want it. I'm gonna go about right like this and pull it over. Now that creates what's known as a vector and I'm gonna apply that. So this is a vector and this is something that will be carved out. Now I can center this in here if I wanna make sure it's where I want it by clicking on it when it's pink we can work with it. So I can put this tool right here. This is a centering tool and I can center it completely on my project. So I'm going to do that. Now it's completely centered on there and I can close out of here. Now I'm going to make some changes on this. Okay, I'm going to, instead of just having a, a square like that, I'm going to go back to here and I, I can go where it will round it off or I can go in eternal like that. And I think I want to do that. So, and then I can pull this in or out and it will make that. So I'm going to go just to do something different. I'm going to go like that. Okay. And I'm going to apply and then close. I could have rounded the corners by using this too. Now, if I leave this like like it is, and I put words and pictures on, it's going to carve down this whole part out. And I don't want that. I just want a little bit of it carved out. So I'm going to add something to it. I'm going to offset it. I'm, so right here on this offset tool down here, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to offset it to the, to the inward side. I don't want both. I want inward. Okay, and I'm going to go 0.25. And we're going to offset. I'll hit offset. Um, it's not letting me offset it. I don't know why. Oh, here's my problem. I point. I had two decimals there. Now let's try it. Aha. There it offset it. Now I don't like that. I want to go a little bit more. So let's go point three five. Ah, uh, quit putting the extra decimal and offset. Now, uh, I don't want both of those. So I'm going to go Control Z and get rid of both. I'm just going to go right where it is there, offset it. And I'm going to leave it right there. So I'm going to close that. Okay, now, I think I want to make this a little bigger. Yeah, but these are two separate vectors. So I can't move them at the same time. But what I can do is group them. And to group them, if I just drag around them and then there's a group button right here. I'm going to hit group. Now these are one vector. So now if I want to enlarge it a little bit or move it, 
That's moving it. I want to enlarge it some. So that enlarged it. But now it's not centered anymore. But if I go back to my centering tool, I should be able to center it. I thought. Didn't, though. But I can do it manually if I have to. I know I can center the whole thing. I don't know why it didn't allow me to center it that time. Okay. So I have this centered on the piece. I think it's a little bit close to the edge, though. So I'm going to go back to what I had it, sorry, and make it a little bit smaller again. And then I'm going to move it to where I want it. Sometimes you got to click on it and tell you, there we go. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. Okay, so this is a vector. Now I can add text if I want. So here's our text over here. I'm going to click on the text button, and then this will create a text square. Now I can move this around, so I'm just going to leave it there for right now. And I can choose the type of text that I want and also the size. Um, so let's go right now. This is, you know, you have all these different text versions to use. I'm going to use this one right here. I was going there, and then I'm going to type Brandon Valley. And it types it out. Now, if I want it bigger, I can change that to two inches or smaller, whatever. Uh, I'm going to leave it at 1.5. Now, this is another separate vector. I'm going to slide this up here. And I want that centered on here, so I'm going to close that, and I'm going to do the centering tool again. And I'm going to center just left and right. And it did put it right where it should be centered, right in the middle of this um, project. Now, I'll show you one other thing you can do here. Let's say that some of these letters are too close together, and that sometimes happens. Sometimes they overlap each other if you're using different fonts or whatever. So if you use this one here, now if I put it between it and I push the right mouse key, it will pull these closer together if I want to move all the letters closer. Now, if I want to move them farther apart, I just hold the shift button down and use that same right click and I can get those moved to where I want them to be. Um, sometimes you have to do that, sometimes you don't. Okay, go back to the editing object. Now I'm gonna add links. So let's do another one here. I'm gonna put it here, get off of that other vector. Okay. I'm gonna put it down here, I'm going to close it out. Uh, I'll center this one also, left and right. There, I'm going to close this. Oh, this is... Okay, so I got Brandon Valley links. So I got words on here. I got a little design around it. I think this is a little high. And it seemed like it's too close to the top. I'm just going to quickly move it down just a hair to right there. Okay. Now, let's say I want to put a picture on here. I want to do a picture. I need to save it onto the desktop or onto a file. I have a couple saved here. And then you have to go. It's called. They're called bitmaps. So up on this folder here, if I open this up, I have some that are saved here. I'm going to put a basketball and a football in there. So here is uh, a basketball. I'm going to put that in here. Now, this is too big, so I'm going to resize it. I'm going to put it right there for now. Now, that's not complete. I have to do something else with it. And actually, let's just go through what I have to do here. Okay, so this is just a picture. It's not actually going to carve that. I have to do what's called a trace bitmap. So see, it's pink here, so I'm working with it. And I go right over here, and this is called trace bitmap. So 
I click that button and this comes up. I'm going to leave all of this the same. Um, it's, a, it's a black and white picture. I'm going to hit preview and then it's there. Now there's also a, the picture is still there. So I want to drag the picture out. So I'm going to close this. I want to drag the picture out of there. But this right here is what's on the, the screen. So we don't need this anymore. This is the original picture. It traced it onto the project. Okay, I'm going to do another one. I'm going to do a football this time. I'm going to trace it over here or put it over here. Now I have to do the trace bitmap again. So with this pink here, trace bitmap. Whoops, sorry, I hit text. Trace bitmap, so I gotta get this highlighted. Okay, I'm gonna leave all of this the way it is. I'm gonna preview it. It looks fine, I'm gonna apply it. And I'm gonna close. Okay, I'm gonna move, the pink is the other, so sometimes I grab the wrong one. And you have to keep sometimes double clicking a punch until you get, there we go. Now this is what's left. If I go on it, you can see it's all pink here. Okay, now maybe I don't like where they are. I'm going to, maybe I want to adjust them. I can do this with the letters too. I can move this around. I can turn it. I'm going to turn it like that. And then I want to move it if I can have it there for a second. Oops, sorry. Sorry. Trying to get it so I can move. And for some reason I'm having difficulty doing that. It shouldn't be this hard. See if I can move this one. You should be able to move these after you have them in place. There we go. Oh, that's sizing it. Well, apologize. It's a little annoying, but now I'm sad I want to move it. There we go. Nope, that's the sizing button. Okay, well, I guess we're going to leave it here for now because I don't want to waste your time on this video. This one that's letting me move should be the same with these. They usually are. There we go. My bad. Took me a long time, but I got it figured out eventually. Okay, so let's say I want to move it there. Eh, I don't like it there. Let's put it there. Let's put this one here. Okay. So let's say that I am completed there. All right, now I have a number of separate vectors. I have this vector here. This is another vector. This is a vector. This is one and this is one. In this case, I just wanna group them all together. So now I'm gonna go around here and I'm gonna group these. So now if I wanna move this whole thing, I can move it. Now they're all connected together. I can move those around. Now I should be able to also then center them. See there, it centered the whole thing. So now it's centered on the piece of wood. They're all together. If I wanna work, if I wanna change one of these, I have to ungroup them. So let's say I wanted to move this football a little bit. I felt it was wrong. Then I just have to trace around the whole thing again or, or pull around the whole thing, lasso them together. And then there is an ungroup. And then now they're ungrouped. Now I can move, you know, this one way or the other. So let's put it right there. Again, I'm going to group them together. And I'm going to say this is done. Let's say I'm happy with this. Okay, so I want to save this. So I'm going to go file, save as, and we'll call this BV example. And I'm going to save that. 
Okay, so I have part of it done, but there's more to do. Now I have to do the tool pass aspect of it. Okay, so I made the design. Now I gotta basically tell the tool how to do it. So I go over here to tool pass. If you if you put your mouse, hover your mouse over, this will open up. Now we're just gonna do the basics today. So we're just gonna do a V carve. So I'm gonna click on the V carve right here. It says V. And then we're gonna have some tools and we can select a different tool. Now for right now, I want us just to use this. There's a number of different tools we can use. They do different things, but this one is the basic. Uh, this is a V-car, uh, the V-bit, 90 degree, 3 eighth inch V-bit. See, this one is right here. We have other bits, and we got to make sure that we have the correct bit installed on the CNC router. Right now, this is the one that I'm most familiar with. So we're going to select that one. Um, we're going to leave this right where it is right now. We're not going to do a flat. Yeah, we'll do a flat depth. I don't think we have to with a V bit, but let's just go point two five. Okay, and then we're going to change this to the V example. I'm going to calculate. Oops, I have to select a vector. So if I wanted to carve these all separately with different kinds of bits, I could have done that, but I'd have to leave them individual. So, but I grouped them together. So now I clicked on this. So now, sorry, that information should be the same. I hit cal calculate, and it shows me what it's going to do here. But this doesn't help much. It doesn't show us much, at least to me. But I can do preview selected tool pass. And if I do that, I find out what it's going to look like. Okay. And I can look at it and I can see what this is going to be. And if I don't like it, I can change it. So let's say I'm looking at this and I decide, you know, and I can do this just by holding the right key down, the right um, mouse button and I can move it around or I can scroll up and down to make it larger or smaller. Now I don't like, I think I want this deeper here. Okay, I don't think this is as deep as I want it. So what I can do is go back to tool pass and I'm just gonna delete this. So I'm gonna delete all and I'm gonna reset my preview and I'm gonna close. Now let's say I wanna go back to the 2D version here of it and I wanna make a change. I didn't like how it looked when I cut it. So let's do that real quick. Okay, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna ungroup. Oops, I don't know if I did or not. Nope. Circle them, I'm gonna ungroup them. Okay, now they should be individual again. And I can scroll in and out if I wanna see uh, it closer. Okay, so let's say I just want to move this football again, just a hair in. Okay, let's say I did that. Let's say that's where I want it. I'm not out anything. Just hit save again. Okay, then I'm going to group them up again. Okay, uh, I'm going to save it again now that I have them grouped. I'm going to go back to tool pass. Now I'm going to change something here. I'm going to start a little deeper. I notice that works sometimes. Instead of starting at the very top, I'm going to go 0.02. I think I have two decimals there. Let's get rid of one of them. And I'm going to hit, I'm going to leave this at V-carve. I'm not going to rename it right now. I'm going to calculate. I'm using the same tool. Then I can preview. And it, Notice it cut it a little deeper. Now, I don't like that. I don't like how that looks. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to delete this out of here. I'm going to reset. I'm going to close. I'm going to go back to, I'm going to delete this V-carve here. 
and we'll open this up again and we're going to leave it at skill point zero two can't remember if that's what i did before so i'm going to calculate i'm going to preview i think it's cut a little deeper this time if you see blue then it's cut all the way through i wanted to cut this a little deeper and i think that outline is a little better now. So, so let's say that I'm happy with this right here. <clears throat> I want to show you something else here. I'm going to reset preview. I'm going to slow this down some and hit preview. And this is how it will cut it. So you can see the cuts that it's making. This is the tool path. And you can see exactly what the machine will do, the order it's going to cut, and then it's done. So if you want to watch that, you can. Um, you can speed it up all the way here in preview it you got to reset the preview preview it and then it just does it instantaneously okay but you get some idea of of you know the order it's going to cut things so let's say i'm happy with that i'm going to rename this now and we're going to call this bb example and close now this right here gives you an idea of how long it's going to take. So this is going to take a total of 11 minutes approximately to cut. Pretty quick. Okay, I'm going to close this. Now I need to save it. So what I've done now is I've created the tool path. Now I have to save it onto a flash drive so I can take it to the machine. Now I'm going to pause this video for a second because I got to find that flash drive. I think I can pause this. Bear with me. I have to do some cutting when I'm doing this. Um, well, I have to save it to the flash drive. I'm going to save it not to a flash drive right now because I don't have one in. But what you would do here now is go file. You have the name here. You're going to save the tool path. Now, I don't have the flash drive in, but I'd click on this flash drive. It would come up here. I click on the flash drive and I would save it on that flash drive. I need to do that because after I save it onto the flash drive, now I have to take it over to the machine. And I'm actually going to go get that flash drive real quick so I can show you. Just bear with me. All right, so I'm going to put this flash drive in. And I'm going to go back. Uh, so it should show up here. Right here, USB. These are ones that are on here already. BV example is the next one. I'm going to save it on there. And now that should be on the flash drive. Now we have to take it over to the machine. And now we do some work on the machine. And I'll make a, a separate video showing how to do that.